And now we continue Dorothy L. Sayre's cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ, starring Gabriel Wolfe. to be king, a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ. The third play, A Certain Nobleman. After Jesus was baptized of John the Baptist, he called his first disciples, Andrew bar Jonah and Simon his brother, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and Philip and Nathaniel. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he saith unto them, And going on from thence, he saw the other two brethren, James bar Zebedee and John his brother, in a boat with their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, so Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Well, fourteen, sixteen napkins. Here you are, my girl. Yes, steward. Oh, Ruben. This garland's coming down. Yes, sir. Put it back in it. Oh, yes, Stuart. And yes, trim yes. that smoky lamp. Yes, sir. Now, where are the water pots for the purifying? Just inside this door. I thought six would be enough. Right. See that there are plenty of clean towels, girl. Yes, Stuart. One right for away. each guest. And this is yes. Lay cushions in the alcove. Here, for the musicians. Hurry up. Yes, Stuart. Uh, Stuart. Stuart. Yes, ma'am. How are you getting on? Just ready, ma'am. I hope everything's to your liking. Yes, indeed, you've all done wonders. Oh, dear, what a business it is getting a son married. Excuse me, Madam Susanna. Yes, child, what is it? Your bracelets, ma'am. Oh, thank you. I should be forgetting my head next. Oh, I hope everything's all right in the kitchen. Mary? Mary, dear, time's getting on. Oh, Susanna, here's a message just arrived from my son. He's coming. Oh, I'm so glad we weren't too late to catch him. And he's bringing six friends. Seven oh. more places. Oh, I'm so sorry, just as you've got everything arranged so nice. Oh. We only thought of it at the last minute, hearing he was in the neighbourhood. Oh, never mind, ma'am. We'll squeeze them in somehow. <laughs> uh, Ruben, move these two tables closer together. Yes. Set another here. And two more couches. Two more couches? Issachar, yes. run up on the roof and keep watch for the bridal party. Uh, yes, Stuart, yes. Oh, I do think it all looks beautiful. The flowers are really lovely. We'll need another tablecloth, ma'am, and some more cups. I don't believe we've got any more in the house. Why run and borrow some from next Indeed. door? Indeed, Mary, dear, you'll do no such thing. You've been on your feet all day. Oh, but I'm enjoying it, Susanna. <laughs> When the son of an old friend gets married. Yes, yes, but you must rest a little before the guests arrive. Oh, one of the servants can go. Oh, look, here's Rebecca. She oh. loves running errands. Rebecca. Yes, dear. Oh, Mary, there you are. 
What's this I hear? Your son, Jesus, is coming? Yes, and we wondered oh, if how exciting I haven't seen him for ages. And now I hear he's set up as a prophet or a preacher or something and making quite a stir. They tell me the young people are mad about him. I suppose he's quite given up the carpentering business. Oh, well, no doubt his cousins can manage, but you must miss him very much at home. We do miss him, of course, but <laughs> we couldn't expect to hold him back when he's called to do God's work. Oh, no, dear. Though I must say that I hope he'll be careful and keep out of trouble. I think I ought to warn you that people are beginning to say rather dangerous things, suggesting that Jesus might be the Messiah. Shh, be Messiah. Oh, quite ridiculous, of course, to people who know him, but it's really not safe these days, and if you could just drop in the hint... Jesus must do as he thinks right, Rebecca. Naturally, dear, and I'm sure I'm the last person to interfere, but for his own sake he ought to contradict these rumours. I'm only trying to be helpful. Uh, you're always so kind. Do you think you could run across to Simeon's wife and ask her to lend us some extra cups and table linen. Jesus is bringing six friends and we're rather short. Well, of course I will, dear. The Simeons are always most obliging. In fact, they said only yesterday madam, that I only... Madam, <laughs> the bridegroom and the bride are at hand. I can see their torches far off, coming down the road from Ooh, Capernaum. Oh, fly. I'll be back in no time. But, but do you think, Rona, what, what I said? They'll be here in ten minutes. <laughs> Let's sit down while we can. Mary... Now that Rebecca isn't here, how much does Jesus really know about... Well, you know, the things you told me, the angels at his birth and the prophecies, and the visit of the wise kings and, and everything. When he was a child, we told him nothing. We waited upon God's good time. But when he was 12 years old, we went up to Jerusalem as usual for the Passover. And somehow or other, when the caravan started back, he got left behind. We thought he was with Zacharias and Elizabeth, and they thought he was with us. So my husband and I went back to look for him, and after a long, anxious search, we found him in the temple, sitting at the feet of the elders, listening to them and asking them questions. They were amazed to find how quick and intelligent he was, and what a lot he knew. And I said, oh, Jesus, dear, it's not kind to behave like this. Your father and I were dreadfully worried. We couldn't think where you'd got to. And he looked at me quite astonished and said, But why? This is my father's house. Surely you knew I should be here. It was like a sword going through my heart. And he was only 12 years old. Oh, Susanna. It's glorious to have a son born to great things. But there are moments when one realises that, oh, that he doesn't belong to one, and those moments are bitter. He came home with us that day, and then I showed him the wise king's gifts, the gold, the frankincense, the myrrh, and told him all I knew. And what did he say? He said nothing. For 18 years after that, he said nothing, but was tender and obedient as any son could be. And I watched and waited knowing that the time would come when his heavenly father would call him away from me. Hark, the guests are approaching. They are only at the top of the street. Tell me quickly. Your son is coming home with his bride. Mine has left me for an end that no one can foresee. Ten weeks ago, it was his 30th birthday, he came to me and said, Mother, I must be about my father's business. He spoke gently, but my mind went back to that day in the temple, 18 years before, and I knew. He left the house next day. Oh, Mary, that was hard. I'm his mother and I know him. Under all his gentleness, there's a purpose harder than steel. Oh, don't look so troubled. I'm very happy, and tonight I shall see my son. Oh, bless you, Mary. I must go and receive the guests. Greetings. Oh, Greetings to you all. Oh, bless God. God bless this marriage. God bless the bride and the bride. Mother, I brought my bride to ask your blessing. She is welcome to my heart. Welcome, my dear. Thank you, madam. Heaven keep you both, my son and daughter, and make your marriage happy and fruitful. Would your dear father had lived to see this day? 
Welcome to you all. Come in, the marriage feast is ready. Eat now, water and towels for the company. Already, ma'am. Welcome, my Lord Benjamin. Ah, my dear Susanna. Welcome, good Rabbi Solomon. Welcome, Susanna. Isn't this a joyful day? Ah, here is a face I'm glad to see. Jesus Barges, if you're very welcome. Peace and blessing light on your house, Susanna, and on your son and daughter. And are these your friends? We're delighted to see them all. I've put you together at one table. You will find your dear mother there. She's been such a help to me. Jacob, dog is now again. Oh, and Rebecca, you brought those extra cups. Oh, yes, seven extra. I hope that will be enough. Uh, excuse me, sir. This way, if you please. Ruben, Ruben, another cushion here. Thank you, sir. Issachar, run to the kitchen and tell them to start serving. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ah, welcome, ma'am. Your party is over here. Ruben, wind to the upper table here. Oh, my Lord Benjamin, pray come up higher. The master requests you will sit at his right hand. Oh, oh, with pleasure, certainly. Jesus, my dear, how good to see you. God bless you, mother. You must know my friends. Philip and Nathaniel, Andrew Barjona, and his brother Simon. Great. James Barzebedi. And this is his brother, John. Madam Mary. Oh, so you managed to get here in time. We fell in with the wedding party on the road from Capernaum. Travelled along merrily together. And what have you all been doing? Tell me, John Barzebedi. Jesus has been telling the good news of the kingdom. We have listened and marveled. Oh, lady, I cannot tell you how wonderful these days have seemed. It is as though everything one said and did. Every stone, every flower, the blessed light itself had a new meaning. You must be the happiest woman in the world. I'm sure we're the happiest men, but everybody feels that happiness. The sick and the poor and the women with their little children. Look out, John. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. How clumsy of me. I hope you didn't go on no, your dress. No, no, no. Uh, Ruben, Issachar, bring a cloth, a little spilt yes. wine. That's nothing. Mama, it's nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, my dear boy, this is a great day. Such a pleasure to see you happily married. Tell me now, have you taken a peep at your bride? Well, sir, not officially. She's not yet raised her veil. Ah, but unofficially? Perhaps you don't need me to tell you what a lucky dog you are. <laughs> eh, my dear? My Lord Benjamin is far too kind. Oh, no, no. Steward, sir, wine to the Lord Benjamin. At once, sir. My Lord Benjamin, we're sorry not to see your son here today. Oh, he was coming, but he didn't seem quite the thing this evening, so his mother kept him at home. We are sorry to hear that. Oh, I don't suppose it's anything much. Touch of fever or something. Oh. Hello, I see you've got one of my humble neighbors here, Simon the Fisherman. A very worthy fellow, lives on my estate. How did he come here, Susanna? I think he came with Jesus Bar Joseph, the prophet from Nazareth, you know. The, the tall man there with the golden beard. Prophet, eh? Didn't know prophets ever came to parties. Uh, that sort mostly live on bread and water. Like that sour-faced fanatical fellow, what's his name? Uh, John Baptist, whom Herod clapped into jail the other day. How did you come to rope in a prophet, huh? The mother of Jesus is a very old friend of mine. Oh, I see that's different. He certainly doesn't look fanatical, and he seems to eat and drink like a human being. My Lord Benjamin. Yes, Rabbi Solomon? I think the young man has the face of one who lives close to God. I beg your pardon, Rabbi Solomon. Forgive a worldly old man's careless way of talking, but this is a very decent wine you've given us, my boy. I'm glad you like it, Lord Benjamin. Yes, and I'm glad too, because we must now propose the health of the young people. Who, me? Of course, oh. as an old friend of my new daughter, and the most important man in the company. My dear, so sir. Stuart, sir, the Lord Benjamin is going to make a speech. Oh. Pray silence for the Lord Benjamin ben Hadad. <laughs> My dear young friends, and my dear old friend Suzanne, <laughs> I don't pretend to be a great speaker. I am much better fitted to do justice to the 
excellence of your hospitality than to the solemnity of the occasion. <laughs> but I speak from long and fortunate experience when I say that a good wife and a happy home are the greatest blessings a man can enjoy. <laughs> Knowing both bride and bridegroom as I do, I feel confident that our friends have chosen most happily for them both. <laughs> and I wish them as much joy in each other and in their family as I have experienced in my own home. Oh, well said, well said. I, I can't say more. Here's to the bridegroom and his bride, the God of Abraham. Bless them. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's over. How to eating and drinking, and let the musicians give us a tune, eh? It's all very well, Stuart, to say more wine, but I've drank a lot, Scandra. No more wine? Holy prophets, what are we to do now? Say so, I suppose. Say so and put the whole house to shame. You'll be flogged for this. It isn't my fault. It's all these extra gifts. You should have left a better margin. The master did the ordering himself. I had nothing to do with it. It's no good arguing about whose fault it was. Oh, wine, what a disgrace. Stuart. Ma'am. What's this? Did you say there was no more wine? It's a fact, Madam Mary. Oh, dear, what can we do? Stuart! Sir! Hissica! Wine to the upper table! Oh, dear. Um, yes, uh, coming, sir, coming. Oh, this is dreadful. Wait a minute. My son will think of a way. Jesus. Well, mother? They have no wine. No wine. No wine. Now, you hear, my son? They have no wine. We must do something to help them. Quickly, I want you to think. Woman, why do you trouble me? What am I to you? My son! John! Lady, what ails you? Look up. Speak to your son. Oh, I have rocked him in my arms, and now the power of God is upon him. When the angel told me that I should bear a son, I praised God and sang aloud, for he fills the hungry with good things. And I asked, not knowing what I asked, but he gave more. Oh, Jesus, son of the blessed. Dear Lord. No, I'm sorry. You have done my bidding too long. That time is over. My time has not yet come. So, what does he mean? I don't know, Andrew. The cups stand empty. The songs are silent. The laughter is stilled. The bride and bridegroom are come to the marriage. But they have no wine. Lady, we must abide the time. Fix your eyes on the master's face. Steward. Ma'am. Issachar. Madam. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. The six great water pots there. Fill them up with water. With water? Quickly. There is power all about us, 
like the stir that goes before the rising of a great wind. All six pots are filled to the brim with water. Draw out now and give it to the steward. The water, sir? Steward, what madness is this? Do as he says. Very well. God of Abraham, it is wine. 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 What or whom have we let into the house? What demon? What angel? Do your service and say nothing. Wine, you lazy slaves. Wine, why the delay? What's the matter with you? I am sorry, sir. We dropped the pitcher. Here is a fresh one. Come in now, sir. Here it is. Ah, here's our wine at last. What was the trouble, Stuart? Looking a new wine skin, eh? Is it a good one? Well, sir, most gentlemen serve their best wine first. And later on, when people have drunk well and are less particular, they bring up a second best. But you have kept the best wine until now. <laughs> And there was a certain nobleman of Galilee whose son was sick at Capernaum. The letter is not quite ready. Sit down in this porch while I finish it. Thank you, my Lord Benjamin. The night is calm, untroubled. I will finish my letter. My mistress will be sorry to hear that the young gentleman is no better. He is dying, Issachar. The doctors say there is no hope. And he is my only son. The hand of the Lord is heavy upon your house. He gives and he takes away. Blessed be his name. Amen. What is this extraordinary story you have been telling them in the kitchen about the prophet Jesus of Nazareth? It's true, my lord. As the God of our fathers liveth, every word is true. Very strange. Did the prophet put anything into the water pots? First and last, my lord. He never went near them. Nor did he touch the water or pronounce any magical words. He said only, fill and then draw out. Then whoever this man Jesus is, he is not a magician. No, my lord. Those gentry always use long words and obscure speech, full of the names of demons. But this man spoke as simply as a child. And he's good. I've never been very religious, but I've knocked about the world a bit, and I know men, whatever strange power he has, I believe it is of God. Besides, they're saying in Jerusalem... What's that? Issachar? Is he known in Jerusalem? He went up to the Passover feast last week, and they're saying there that he's the Messiah of Israel. The Messiah of Israel? Why? Did he do any mighty works there? No, my lord. But I can tell you all about it, for I was there myself. My mistress Susanna had gone up to Jerusalem with my young master and mistress and all the household. And on the second day, I was standing in the outer court of the temple. You know what that court is like? More like a fair than anything else. With people selling pigeons and lambs for the sacrifice. And a wicked price they charge too. And the pilgrims going up and down, all mixed up with the goats and oxen. Well, anyway, I just finished chaffering for a couple of doves when I noticed a bit of a disturbance. And there was a bunch of young men standing at the top of the steps leading down from the inner court. And at the head of them stood Jesus of Nazareth. And my word, he had a scroll of the law in one hand and in the other a scourge, a whip cord, like a cat of nine tails. And if it hadn't been for his golden hair, just for a moment you'd have taken him for his cousin. 
John the Baptist. And then he spoke. And everybody stopped to listen. Children of Israel, chosen of the Lord, is this the house of God? And are you his people? Shaffering and cheating, quarreling in the very courts of the Lord, take heed to yourselves. For what says the prophet Malachi? The Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. And they shall offer unto the Lord offerings in righteousness. So speaks the prophet. Offerings in righteousness. But what sort of offerings are these? Out of my sight! Robbers and liars, every one of you! I will not bear you in my father's house! The temple police tried to interfere, but they were stopped by the elders. I heard what they said, for they were standing close beside me. Leave it alone. There might be a riot. The people have no love for the merchants. Can you blame them? I've told you this market should be regulated and the price is controlled. I dare say, but this fellow is dangerous. He'll set himself up as a popular leader, and then there'll be trouble. There may be more to it than that. You heard what he said. The Lord whom he seeks shall suddenly come to his temple. Hmm? What of it? That is a prophecy of the Messiah. And I shouldn't wonder if this Jesus were to set up a claim to be the Christ. Do you think so? That would never do. And supposing he were the Messiah? He? The Messiah? You're joking. But it means we had better go carefully. Well, he must do something. What do you propose? We will ask him to give us a sign. And if he can't give us one, we will have him locked up as a charlatan and an agitator. And what if he does give you a sign? In that case, my dear Shadrach, we will leave him to you and you can acknowledge him as the Messiah at your own risk. Hmm. Shadrach, what are you doing? I'll go and speak to him. I think you'd better come with me. And presently, as he stood there under the porch, smiling a little now, and drawing the cords of the whip through his fingers, the elders came up to him and spoke to him. Sir, what is the meaning of this disturbance? You are an elder of Israel, and you ask me that. It is written in God's word, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. And what business is it of yours? If you take it on yourself to do this kind of thing, will you give us a sign of your authority? Yes, I will give you a sign. Destroy this temple of God, and in three days I will raise it up. Destroy the temple? Six and forty years it took to build it. You say you will raise it up again in three days. You heard what I said. Will you now give me leave to pass? Oh, let the man go. It's no good arguing with him. He must be beside himself. A very quick-witted man. You asked for a sign, and he has not refused. Mm -hmm. If anybody has been made to look foolish, it is not Jesus of Nazareth. You will have to handle him carefully, for he is both bold and clever. He is the more dangerous. The service is beginning. I shall report this matter to the high priest. So they went away. But Jesus went down into the city, and a great crowd followed him, and hung upon his words, while he preached the good news of the kingdom. A strange man, and a strange story. See, Issachar, here is the letter. And here is something for your pain. My lord is very generous. I hope there may soon be better news to send. It is as God wills. Good night to you. Good night, my lord. Stay. Where is the prophet now? We left Jerusalem before him. But I heard that he was expected back tonight in Cana. I must try to see more of him. Farewell. Farewell, my lord, and thank you. Signs and wonders, tales and prophecies. The world is full of new things. But what is all that to me? My son is dying. Have pity, O oh God, on an old and lonely man. The night is still calm. Untroubled, 
with the stars high in the firmament. Dorcas, Dorcas. My lord. Has the doctor been? Is the boy any better? Oh. You are crying. <laughs> that means the worst. Oh, my lord. They say it is only a matter of hours. Oh, merciful <laughs> God, that didst restore the widow's son by the hand of thy prophet Elijah. Dorcas. My lord. Run to the stable. Call for horses. One for me, and a saddle horse for the groom to lead him. Tonight? Hurry, girl, hurry! Yes, my lord. Horses! Horses for my lord! It is only a chance. I can but try. Dorcas! My cloak! Are the horses coming? Yes, my lord, yes. Quickly, quickly! My stirrup, Eliezer! My lord, where are you going at this time of night? Cana, Jerusalem, anywhere, to look for Jesus of Nazareth. So Jesus and his disciples came again into Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. arguing, Andrew. We've given our word to see this thing through, and we shall manage somehow. My dear James Bar Zebedee, it's all very well for you and your brother John. Your father's well off. But my brother Simon and I have only ourselves to depend on, and Simon's got a wife and family. Haven't you, Simon? Oh, don't bring me into it. My wife and I have talked the matter out, and she quite agrees. I dare say we'll be able to do a bit of fishing now and again, like we used to. And after all, we don't need much. A little bread and oil and handful of dates and olives. How about clothes? They don't grow on trees, and I must have a new pair of sandals. Oh, really, Andrew, I never knew such a man for making difficulties. Cheer up, it'll be all right when the kingdom comes. Yes, but when's it coming? If we have to tramp about Galilee like this for years... <laughs> oh, stop laughing, James. Well, you look so cross. Well, it's hot, <laughs> and I'm tired, and I'm worried. None of you people can think five minutes ahead. Hey. Don't let John see you looking like that. Oh, John. Look at him, over there, trotting along with his head in the clouds, chattering to the master and taking no notice of anything. We might all starve as far as he's concerned. John, indeed. Yeah, you leave my brother alone. All right, all right, James Bar Zebedee. But you and your brother... Well, what about children, my brother? Children, children. What are you quarrelling about? Money. You must make up your minds, you know. Nobody can serve two masters. You can't serve God in your own interest at the same time. I'm only worried about how we're going to manage. But you mustn't worry. Live like the birds from day to day. They neither sow nor reap nor hoard up food for the winter. Yet God feeds them all the same. And these wildflowers, think how they grow. They don't spin, they don't weave. Yet I tell you, Solomon, in all his glory, was never so splendidly arrayed. And if God takes care of these little plants which flower for a day and are food for cattle tomorrow, do you think he won't take care of you? You have so little faith. Don't plan ahead like worldly people. Let the future look after itself and don't meet trouble halfway. I'm sorry, but... You... Take all your troubles to God. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and all doors will be opened to you. If one of your sons were to ask you for bread, would you give him a stone? If he asked you for fish to eat, would you give him a snake? What do you say, Simon? <laughs> no, Master. I'm always ready to give my sons anything that's good for them. Then if you, who are sinful men, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly father deal kindly and lovingly with you? Master, master. Yes, what is it, John? Take care. Those horsemen are in a hurry. They'll run us down. Hey, look out, look out. Hey there, you peasants. We're looking for a man called Jesus of Nazareth. I am Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, are you? Thank heaven, sir. I've been hunting for you everywhere. You may remember me. Benjamin ben Hadad from Capernaum. We met at that wedding at Cana. Ah, yes, of course I remember. What do you want of me? My son, sir, my oldest son, he's sick, dying. 
He may be dead already. Sir, I beseech you to come down with me to Caponium and heal him if he is still alive. A matter of hours, the doctor said. It is now the seventh hour, half a day lost already. I brought a horse, mount and ride, and we may still do it. What made you come to me? You are a prophet. You have power. I heard what you did in Cana. The servants told me how you made the water wine. Only lay your hand on my son. Your touch will do him good. Oh, come quickly. I implore you not to waste time. Oh, what can I say? I know I've never been particularly pious or thought much about religion, but if only you can save my boy, I'll do anything, anything. I'll serve God truly. I'll try to be a better man. I'll listen to all you say and believe from my heart. You are all alike. Unless you see miracles, you will believe nothing. No, oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind me, sir. Come down before my child dies. Go your way home. Oh, no. Your son shall live. But you just... Oh, dear God, let him only believe it. I tell you, he shall live. I believe you. As you have believed, so it will be. Thank you. God bless you. Return to your home now. Go in peace. What? Eliezer! I was nearly asleep in the saddle. Oh, why, it's long past daybreak. Where are we? Just coming down into Capernaum. Oh, how sweet the morning air is. It's good to be home again. If the news should be bad, if it should be the worst, Eliezer, he said, as you believe, and I do believe, he said it would be all right. My lord! Oh, look, here comes Dorcas running. Good girl! My lord! My lord! Well now, Dorcas, what news? He is alive! Praise God, my lord, alive and better. He will recover. My boy will live. Oh, thank God, my lord, thank God. God. Thank God indeed. Oh. Oh. Easy, child. Oh. Get your breath. When did he take a turn for the better? Oh, we all thought he was gone. Oh. He was so weak, parched with fever. The mistress bathed his head. Oh, it was like fire. He'd been rambling, but towards evening he seemed to have no strength left. Oh, he was sinking fast, and I said to my lady, oh, if only his father were here. Oh, my boy. His breathing seemed to grow fainter and fainter, and I thought it had stopped, and I threw my apron over my head, and then my lady said, in a funny, quick voice, Dorcas, see you, and I laid my hand on his, and it was all of a cool sweat. And he was asleep and breathing like a child. <laughs> oh, there, there, there. Tell me, Dorcas, what time was this? Yesterday, at the seventh hour. At the seventh hour? At the seventh hour he told me, your son shall live. And I believed him, and it was so. Hear me. Jesus of Nazareth, wherever you are, whether you are prophet, angel, or Christ, I cannot tell, but I call all these to witness that your word 
is the living truth. A Certain Nobleman was the third of a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ, the man born to be king. Tomorrow, Judas becomes a target for manipulation in the heirs to the kingdom. In The Man Born to be King, you heard Gabriel Wolfe, Raph de la Tor, Hugh Dixon, Betty Bascom, June Tobin, Gladys Spencer, Ian Frost, Jeanette Richer, John Westbrook, Ralph Truman, John Glenn, John Boxer, Stephen Jack, John Wise, Malcolm Hayes, and Harrison Kalf. The Man Born to be King was written by Dorothy L. Sayers and dramatised by Raymond Rakes.